I'm Dave, and welcome to Indow, the way of the indie. This is the story of how I learned how to stay motivated. That's a little misleading, actually, but we'll start with the lies and move on to the truth in a few minutes, and it'll all make sense. So, I wanted to make video games my whole life, but I had two major roadblocks. The first is that I became the sort of person who would lose motivation, burn out, and quit. And the second is that I convinced myself I didn't actually want to make video games, and couldn't even if I did. These are two powerful problems based in lies, and I think the experience I had is pretty universal. So I'm going to give you the cheat sheet for how I figured my way out of it all. I was passionate about video games as a kid, lots of people are, but even at a young age it went beyond playing them for me. I started appreciating them on a more artistic level. I would look at the art for Final Fantasy VI in an old Nintendo Power magazine, and I would experience a feeling of longing. Uh, somewhat tied to the fact that I wasn't able to beat the game and find out what happened to the characters I was attached to, but mostly because it evoked such a strong creative spark in me. I would do things like use a word processor and write stories for video games and then make charts for equipment and maps, and I would even, still in a word processor, have parties of characters get in battles with monsters and make tables for it, and I would have damage formulae and other stats for calculating how it should all work. I didn't know how to program, but I used the skills I had. The problem was that whenever I heard a story about some game designer, they were programming their own games when they were four years old. I remember being 11 and looking at a How to Program Video Games book my sister got from the library. There was a How to Make Your Own Star Trek Video Game tutorial in there with hundreds of pages of source code for it. And I could kind of read it. It was written in QBasic, so there's some degree of legibility. But it was intimidating. And the end result? A terrible video game. That was no fun. It wasn't Mario, it wasn't Final Fantasy VI. It was garbage. So this planted an important and problematic seed in my mind. I wasn't one of them, one of the blessed few with the gift to create something good. What's weird is later on in life, I would keep doing stuff like those old word processor games, but in greater sophistication, eventually including things like writing and directing short films, longer films that actually got screened, coding tools to help with online gaming events, and eventually I just made some simple video games. One was even an implementation of the battle system from the aforementioned Final Fantasy VI. But I still remember believing that the realm of making real games was both beyond me and something I didn't want to do, because it was beyond me. In retrospect, it's easy to see that I was being sort of drawn towards my home tribe, if you will. But at the time, it was even easier to be oblivious. I would still take a stab at game development in my free time occasionally, first with great intensity and passion propelled by motivation, and eventually that would fade as the scale of the challenge became apparent and the months would drag on and I would slow and then I'd stop and then I'd feel guilty and then I'd start again a few fleeting times and then I would quit. With the rest of my life, I took up a more traditional trajectory. I worked at a good, solid job doing other sorts of computer and design work. I felt a sinking feeling all the time doing it, but I ignored it. It was safer. I didn't like it, but I ignored that. I could work on games in my free time after all. In actuality, I couldn't, though, because I always quit. This goes back to my personality type a little bit, although I think the issue of motivation is a common problem. But it also goes back to an important flaw with my behavior throughout life, particularly at school. Though at the time I thought it was actually a virtue. I had a chip on my shoulder growing up directed towards the kids who got good grades, especially if they were also rich. I wanted to get better grades than them, but the twist was that I wanted to do it with less effort. I flunked every homework check in high school and I was proud of it because I wanted to keep that streak going and then prove I was still smarter when I got the highest score on the test. And if I didn't, I had my excuse built in. I was able to pull it off even in university, although by then there was no one really to make the point to, but it was about identity. I mean, really it was about fear, but whatever. The takeaway is that while I was able to figure out a few tricks to help myself learn quickly and avoid studying, I missed out on the real point. School was trying to teach me just to work. I looked down on others who learned the lesson and worked hard, and I was proud of myself for not learning it, and I thought myself smart for it. It's stupidity, and anyone who tells you otherwise is a coward, not a genius. I thought getting a good result with less effort was a way to prove that I was so damn clever when really it showed I was too stupid to understand the huge life problem they were trying to equip me for. I wanted to make video games, but I had trained myself to not be able to, because I only worked when I felt like it. I told myself I knew what hard work was because I completed a few big projects, even though I'd ensured the scope was big, but just small enough to fit within my window of motivation, because I knew I would stop working after that. The end result was that I was unable to attain my dream. And so I told myself it wasn't my dream. And time passed, years of it, until four distinct threads that had been gestating in my mind for years all came together and helped me. The first was realizing that I was unhappy. I'd been generally happy for most of my life, but at some point that disappeared. A few years before I noticed it had actually happened, and I wondered why. 
This led me to reflect on some of what I just shared with you and led to the second idea I needed in my mind. I admitted what my passion had been throughout my life and how I had been incapable of satisfying it with the choices I'd made and effort I'd put in. Thirdly, I remembered watching several tutorials on how the Unity game engine worked thanks to Quill, and I watched them out of curiosity originally and thought, eh, that's not that different from what I already do. But I thought nothing else at the time. What matters here is that I remembered it in combination with the other threads in my mind, so the alchemy could take place. Fourthly, and this was the key to finally figuring everything out, I remembered a Let's Play I'd watched. And I tracked it down and watched it again because some words stuck with me. Don't break the chain. You never know when or where you're going to get the most important advice of your life. Don't break the chain is one of the like tools that I've used to keep myself like dedicated to doing things. It was started by Jerry Seinfeld and people were like, how do you do this? How, how do you write that many jokes? And he's like, it's really simple. You just take a little calendar and then you write a joke the first day and make a little X with, or a check mark or something through the first box. And then the second day you make another little X and a check mark because you write a joke and uh, then just don't break the chain. That was it. That was the way of thinking about things that worked for me. The way they tried to teach me about discipline in high school and university didn't work. I was too caught up in my own baggage. But luckily, I got another chance to learn the lesson. And this time, I did. There was no focus on success or failure as long as I started working each day. There was no one to answer to except myself. I hate to give advice that boils down to this one weird trick will help make your dreams come true, but that's kind of what happened with me. I bought a calendar for $5, I found Quill's tutorial again, downloaded Unity, and started the chain. That was just over three years ago. I've kept it going the entire time, except when I intentionally break it at Christmas each year, and on January 1st I started again. So for me, those were the tools and realizations I needed to finally get my act together and take a less passive role in my own life. Self-honesty and learning how to make myself work. And just to reiterate in case I haven't made it clear, motivation is a lie. It's an emotion that makes working easier, but like all emotions, it's temporal by nature. Emotions may be powerful, but they come and they go. The trick is to learn to work without motivation. And incidentally, motivation tends to show up after you start. The act of starting the work is what invites motivation. And if you can start every day, it will be there most of the time. In the long run though, it rarely arrives early. Don't wait for it. Next time on In Dow, The Way of the Indie, Dave sets aside the pep talk and switches to a dispassionate technical recap as he goes through the process he used to learn 3D modeling.